द महाभारत लिटरली द स्टोरी ऑफ ग्रेटर इंडिया इज द अदर ट्विन दैट हैज डेकोरेटेड हिंदुइज्म अलोंग विद द रामायण थ्रू मिलीनिया इन द रामायण द सीन ऑफ वॉर इज अ क्रॉस द ओशन फॉर अवे फ्रॉम द किंगडम ऑफ रामा इन द महाभारत द सीन ऑफ वॉर is at hastanipur in their own kingdom in both the war is between the virtue and the vice right and the wrong good and evil indeed the mahabharata is the story of war with our own bosom the bhagavad gita which is the divine message of this grand epic is the epitome of hindu spiritual philosophy the mahabharata is the most fascinating story of this grand legend narrated by another great hindu mind ved vyasa between 400 and 300 bce is the world's longest epic poem consisting of 100000 verses Vyasa literally means arranger. It may, however, be possible that this is not the name of any one individual. Rather, it may denote the position of a compiler. Historians and scholars have established that the Mahabharata was, in fact, written and compiled over many centuries, beginning. from the first half of the first millennium bce and reaching its completion towards the first century ce or even later in the ramayana the story revolves around god in the form of lord rama in the mahabharata is centered on another god lord krishna The story of the Mahabharata begins with an ancient king of Hastinapur who had two sons. The elder son, Dhritarashtra, was blind, so he was barred from sitting on the throne after his father's death. The younger son, Pandu, ruled for some time but died prematurely when all his five sons, collectively called Pandavas, was still young in this situation the old blind uncle dhritarashtra was asked to become the king temporarily until the pandavas became eligible in ancient hindu scriptures the language used by the great rishis is often symbolic dhritarashtra's blindness therefore was not so much physical as it was mental he could not discriminate between right and wrong once he became the ruler his greed for power again flared up in his mind he had 100 sons all called kuravas the eldest being duryodhan in the mahabharata the five pandavas represent the virtues while the hundred kurvas represent the vices when the pandavas grew up drodhana played a foul trick in order to use up the kingdom yudhishthira the eldest of the pandavas was a man of unimpeachable truth but he had a weakness for the game of dice his absolute commitment to the virtue of truth and righteousness earned him the legendary status of dharmraj the prince of religion <clears throat> drodhan with the help of his cunning maternal uncle shakuni defeated yudhishthira by deception dhritarashtra the blind father remained silent and gave his son tactic support for his immoral acts by not intervening rather he hoped that his son would become the king 
how often a similar drama unfolds in our own lives when we see our own kith and kin do wrong but we turn a blind Dharatrashtra eye. When Yudhishthir lost everything and his right to the kingdom was gone, he became desperate. He gambled his own five brothers and later, to his ultimate shame, he also lost the common wife of all the Pandvas, Drupati. After this, Drodhan became even more wicked. He ordered that Draupati be undressed before the full court. Yudhishthira and his four brothers watched the horrible scene without speaking, but they hung their heads in shame. Draupati represents our honor. When she was put in this most difficult situation, she looked around and begged for help from all. When no one came forward, she cried for Lord Krishna, who at once saved her honor by providing unending yards of growth to keep her covered and intact. Much later, Draupadi would confront Lord Krishna, asking why he had not helped sooner. The Lord replied that as long as she wanted looking for help in other places, he would not come. But whenever she remembered him in full faith, he would always be there. This is Lord's promise. Our God is a spiritual power within us. When man is banking only on his own physical and material aspects, the divine energy is subdued. Man, however, may tap into the infinite energy of the divine whenever he wants if he only will turn from the material to the spiritual. After the Pandavas lost the game, they were ordered to go to the forest to spend the next twelve years in exile. When they returned, they requested that they may be given a small piece of kingdom where they could peacefully live. The haughty and unjust Duryodhan turned down this request. Lord Krishna, who was their distant cousin, intervened but to no effect. The Pandvas, with the consent of Lord Krishna, declared war with the Kauravas. Once again, as in the case of Ramana, it became clear that although war is not a good choice, it could not always be avoided. Both Pandvas and Kauravas approached Sri Krishna for help. The Lord declared that He Himself would be available on one side without any army or armaments. On the other side would be all His men and materials but without Him. This is a clear signal for man to choose between God and Mammon. Arjuna, the most proficient warrior, prince among the Parvans, at once opted for the Lord, and in equal haste, Durodhana chose the army and other materials. The Parvas won the war with the guiding, guidance and blessings of Lord Krishna. The Mahabharata is war within oneself a war that we all had to fight with our own conscience between right and wrong. Arjuna, under the guidance of Lord Krishna, kept his attention totally fixed on God throughout the period of war. This helped the Pandvas to not only win the war, but this spiritual instruction became a saga of sacred scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, which would transform the lives of innumerable people across the millennia and all over the globe. The main purpose of religion is to guide people on the just and virtuous path. The saga of Mahabharata deals with the crucial challenge of the war within one's own self. 
the different characters of this great epic depict internal mental attitudes and mindsets which chiefly dictate how humans behave and act in different situations. Hindu philosophy states that human beings go through repeated birth cycles with the next birth being assigned to a person on the basis of his or her last actions karmas. Only as a human being one is bestowed with mind to discern the right from the wrong as also free will to strive to change the natural born tendencies toward virtue and purity. Dhritarashtra is born with the vasana of greed which he succumbs to and gives attractive support to his son Duryodhana who is not only greedy but when unrestrained became haughty and sinful. Yudhishtra, eldest of the Pandava brothers, is born with utmost truth and honesty but had the vasna of an evil habit of gambling. He ultimately lost not only all his wealth but that he had but also had all his brothers and their common wife Tripadi with dire consequences to face. Pure and virtuous to the court, Drupadi initially looks for support in men and material. Only when she realizes how unreliable these sources are, she returns to the divine who immediately comes to her aid. Arjuna had such a steadfast faith and devotion toward God and he never faltered. With his mind utterly focused to God at all times, he was able to win without any tribulation. Through eons of birth cycle, one may gradually learn and grow. The saga of Mahabharata gives a clear insight of the inborn tendencies, vasana in human beings and how the virtuous become the ultimate winners.